welcome everyone to another episode of the Rachel and Coyote Show. Rachel here is not only a life coach, but she is a therapist extraordinaire, and she's going to kind of give us some tips today. And we're talking about online dating and mostly from the men's perspective. And well, first off, before we get started, how are you today, Rachel? Oh, good. You know, I love this topic. I think it's going to be so fun and, you know, hopefully some good tips for the men. Hopefully. Um, I've got some crazy stories to tell Ooh. because, uh, you know, I, my, my wife, my first wife, she left me, oh, it was what, 96, I believe, 96 or 97. And um, no, I take that back. I'm sorry, 2007, because we had been married for about 17 years. Mm. And um, anyway, I decided it was time to get out and date. And being that I haven't really been in the dating scene for almost 20 years, I didn't know what to do. I heard about online dating, decided, hey, what the heck, I'm going to try it. And, you know, I'm still in my 30s and, uh, you know, kind of young and ready to get out there. And I, I wasn't prepared for what I discovered when mm. I started it. Because I, you know, I, I know men can be dogs. They just, some guys just want to go out and they want to have sex and that's it. And I was actually looking for a relationship. I didn't realize how many women out there were just looking for sex too. Mm. And some, I mean, right off the bat, I was getting personal photos, if you know what I mean. And um, I was kind of shocked, you know, so women were sending you nude photos before they met you? Yes. Which, was, like I say, was a shock for me. I mean, the last time I'd asked anybody on the, out on a date, it was the 80s. So, <laughs> And um, so I never really found anything serious, kind of gave it up, um, got back into doing it again. Things hadn't really changed that much. And then things did change when I got those that were just kind of looking for somebody to give them money. And I'll, I'll give you a great example. I, I went out on a date and this lady was supposed to be a teacher. So I was like, oh, good. This is somebody kind of professional. You know, I, this is, might end up being something serious. So we got out on the date and things were going wonderful. And at the end, we stepped outside and, you know, I got a little, little peck on the cheek, that kind of thing. And, um, you know, I wasn't looking just to have sex with somebody. So we weren't going home together, but I walked her to her car like a gentleman should. Yeah. And she turned to me and she says, um, you know, I, I have a uh, hundred dollars worth of food stamps here. And if you could just give me 50 bucks for them, you can buy them off of me. And I'm like, I, I don't do things like that. You know, it's not, that's not right. And um, then she looked at me and she goes, well, you know, I don't know if I really want to go out with you anymore. You don't really look like your picture and, you know, and this, that, and the other. And she told me that I looked heavier and which was kind of strange since I had just lost a whole bunch of weight from the time I took that photo. <laughs> and, uh, I thought, is there, are there really people out there like that? I mean, have, have you ever run across people like that? Who want money or who lie about their picture? No, but that just want money. I mean, like they, like I said, this lady was trying to sell me her food stamps. Yeah. So, you know, I have a stories podcast episode. It's episode 18 on predatory women. And, you know, generally predatory women, these are very, very bad individuals. So they do very serious things. Uh, you know, I'm talking about ruin your life. You know, you can end up in jail type of bad, really bad. So, you know, that individual, that it, it it's going close to the line where she's doing things because you're not, you're not supposed to do that with federal, um, 
benefits. So, you know, there are rules, you know, mm -hmm. and so when you start going across those lines, this is someone who's making poor judgment calls. So it says something to her character and, you know, certainly it's a spectrum. I wouldn't say that she's in that evil predatory, but you know, you don't know because could she, because you know, she has some interesting judgment, but absolutely men need to be aware that there are predatory women and that not all women are good and you need to be careful. Oh, that's for sure. I, you know, and I even ran across those that we barely started dating and they were already wanting to get married. I'm like, can, can you give me a little bit of time? You know, uh, that's how many a big, into this did they have this conversation? I'm talking like three or four dates. What would they say? It's just that that topic of getting married kept coming up, kept coming up. And then if I said, you know, I'm not ready for that just as yet, I mean, I'd like to date for a while. Then all of a sudden they don't have nothing to do with me. And I'm they start talking bad about me. And I'm like, this is this is absolutely crazy. So I just kind of decided to get away from it. I said, I'm, I'm, I can't deal with this. But then, you know, I get lonely. You go out and, you know, I've met a few women. They would be, uh, I mean, they would be nice people, but I just wouldn't find in the right one. And yeah. I decided, okay, I'm going to give this one more try. Just one more try. And if it doesn't work this time, I'm totally done. And then I met Michelle, my wife, and we actually talked for, got going on three months before we actually went out on a date. And, yeah. you know, we weren't exchanging uh, pornographic type photos or anything. <laughs> <laughs> and we got to know each other and, um, and found our, we had a lot in common. And I'm not saying that all online dating is bad just to be careful because i was i was fortunate i did happen to find the one but there are those out there that oh my god you don't know what you're getting into yeah yeah you know it's kind of like the wild wild west so i don't think there's a person on the planet if they try to online dating that they don't have some kind of horror stories so you know in a way it's to be expected i would say that a lot of people think that well, if I want to find love or I want to make my relationship work, that things will just magically happen. And I think that's a bunch of bullshit. <laughs> if you want a, the relationship that you have, you need to work on it. If you want to keep, you want to save, you know, you have to work on that. If you have to go to couples counseling, whatever you do, you have to work hard. And then when it comes to dating, that's even easier. It's easier to date than it is to maintain a relationship. The relationship's the, you know, hard work. But dating, to just say, ah, oh, I'm just going to find love. It's going to magically happen. You know, maybe, maybe. But I think that people would be better served, men and women, if they label what they want. Like you did. You're like, I want a relationship. And so you filter quickly. There is nothing wrong with that. And then saying, well, you know, I got to put some work in. Like, I, you know, I got to kiss a lot of frogs, you know, women find a prince or whatever. So you have to label it. You say, I would, I would like a relationship. I would like to find love. Know what you want. And then know that it's going to be a work. And, it, you know, not always funny. Like, oh, dating, like, you know, when you're um, single, you your married friends or your friends in relationships they're looking at you like look at you in the single life you know you got it so great and then the single people are looking at the married people like oh man i wish i had someone so um yes it's work yeah definitely and and i'm telling you go out there and date but if you're looking for a serious relationship take your time you know don't go for the first person that you meet that that's another mistake that I think a lot of people make. I mean, and maybe that first one that you meet is the one I, I can't tell you. I'm just, that's my advice is to get out there and, and meet people and make that known when you're going online dating that, Hey, I'm, I'm looking, um, I, I want to go out on a few dates and let's just see how this progresses. 
but um, it, it, how many people lie when they're doing their profiles? That's another thing. Yes, yes. You know, I would say, you know, this is my this is my money tip is that I think that if you just came out of a relationship, you have to heal yourself you know, you have a lot going on. And I honestly think it would be worth it to go to therapy, even if you're trying to find love or you got out of a relationship, it's not just couples counseling. Honestly, you would be well served because you're not gonna be the type of person that a quality person wants to be with unless you kind of fix your stuff, right? So that's my money tip. You know, when it comes to the online, the problem with the online is what makes it so wild, wild west is that there's a lot of deceit and there's a, the volume is so immense. And so you can, you can go on Bumble and you can go on Grindr and you can go on Hinge and you can go on Match and you can go on, you know, you like a million coffee meets bagel, you know, there's so many. And so, and then when you go on there, you don't just got your small town, your city, you got the entire US, you got the entire world. And so you, you, it's this false sense of complacency that next, next, you know, you can just swipe, swipe, swipe. And so too many choices overwhelms your brain. And then also of the choices that you're presented with, it's not real. You know, if you're a small town guy who's a farmer, and you're, you find, you know, a hundred pictures that you think these women are hot, but they are, you know, in all kinds of cities all around the world, you know, maybe your budget as a farmer, or maybe the work that you do, you are not prepared to take flights to all these cities True. and meet women. You know, some people, they, you know, geography is not a big deal to them. They, you know, they don't mind, but so it's the multitude of choice. But then the choices that you have, it, it you have to filter it. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. To me, I always looked for somebody that was at least within twenty miles. <laughs> You're um, a realist. Like you were serious. You're like, I would like a relationship. <laughs> right. I mean, because uh, you know, there would be women that would message me, and they're couple of states away and i'm going how do you think this is going to work if i'm here you're there i've got an established job i've got a place that i'm living i don't want to up and move it's i don't know it just seems unrealistic unless you know you want one of those ones you can find from russia that you could just you know marry them as soon as they get off the plane <laughs> i mean i don't know what you're looking for yes so th that goes back to the labeling you have to know what you want because when you're filtering, there's a lot of people on the apps that they're not, they just window shopping. Mm -hmm. They're not even interested. They just want to flirt. They just want to see if they still got it. They're curious. They have no intention of putting any time or effort into it. And so, you know, I would say for my girlfriends, the advice that I would give to them, and this is very much based off my personality, I'm very direct. So this may not fly with everybody, but I would tell any girlfriend of mine, look, you know, to filter out who's a time waster and who's actually there for the, you know, a reason like a date, that's step number one, before you even get to the relationship. I would say if that man, the first time you message, if you message and then you, you move it off to your cell phone off the platform, or you're still messaging on the platform, I would say if that man does not ask you on a date within 24 to 48 hours, he's in the time waster category. Now, this isn't to say that this man, maybe later you guys message and you go on a date or whatever, but I would just say to the women, look at the people that you did date from online, look at the ones that took their time, those dates, did they ever go anywhere? And nine times out of 10, it did it. Um, and you know, again, all kinds of scenarios, but the reason why I say that is because men, they know like, oh, you live in my town, like, oh, I like your picture, they know. Okay, I would like to message you. Okay, I'd like to ask you on a date. The people who are on there just for fun, like just getting their kicks or whatever, or seeing what nude photos they can get for free, you know, those men, they don't 
ask for a date. So it's kind of like a litmus test. Yeah, I, to me, I just don't think you should just come on there and play games. I mean, be upfront about what you want. If you're just looking to hook up, casual dating kind of thing, make sure you let people know that. I'm, I, th I think there's actually categories that you can put yourself in for that kind of thing. Um, but when you go out and you play these games, you make it hard on the people that are trying to be serious because then people are always skeptical of them as well. Yeah. Well, you know, in a perfect world that, you know, cause you're a serious person and a gentleman, you wanted to do things the right way. I have no idea what the percentages is, right. but if I had to guess, I would say it's 50, 60, 70% time wasters not serious like because you've got the world so you've got like you know all kinds of catfish who knows what's going on so you know and also i just don't think there's no man on the planet who would ever say yeah you know i want to spend as little money as possible get as many free nudes and free phone sex as possible and get laid as much as possible and i want no relationship and it's going nowhere no man is going to say this if he's trying to sleep with hot women as hot as he can get. So there is a lot of deception on the apps and you know people have to filter and that goes into that piece where you got to work hard. You better go in if you're going to date, you better go in knowing that you are going to get the runaround and it's almost like a job. You know, there's some things about a job you don't like. Same with dating, you got to do some stuff that's unpleasant. And one of the biggest things is that everybody lies about their stats. So, you know, uh, you can lie about a lot of things too, but you know, I think for men, the biggest thing that men lie about is probably their height and their age. Uh, and why would you lie about those kind of things? I mean, people are gonna find out when they meet you. <laughs> right. Well, Kyle, you know, you have a brain and you think logically, okay? I, there's this hilarious story, you know, Lolo Jones is an Olympian. And she puts a lot of her dating stories on her Twitter and her Instagram. And she had the most hilarious tweet. It was so funny. She had actually said that she went on this date and she's tall. Like, let's say she's 5'8", okay? And so she had heels on. And so she knows how, you know, her two-inch heels or whatever. So the man says he's six foot. But when he shows up on the date, she's looking down at him. And she's not even wearing her heels. So, you know, if a woman knows how tall she is, knows how tall her heels are you know you know like for myself i'm super short so it's a little bit harder for me to tell if someone's lying but a woman who's 5 8 with two inch heels will know that you are not a man who is six foot like you said so men lie about their height and another big one and i'm not saying that you know women don't do this too but the two big ones is men lie about their height and men lie about their age and the reason they lie about their age is to get past the filters so every app you can say i want an age range of this and so if you're young and hot these men and women are not lying about their age or stats they don't have to but let's say you're a man who's 42 and you're trying to get dates with the 28 year olds so what's happening is that you know, some 28 year olds will go on a date with a 42 year old, but they don't have to, the hot ones, they don't have to, they can, they can get dates with guys their own age if they want to. So to get past the filters, men, so the older you get, the, you lie about your age. And so this is my tip for you. This is my tip for the men. It's kind of a damned if you do and damned if you don't, because you're trying to get past the filters. So I had a man say to me, He's like, if a woman lied about her age, that's a deal breaker. And I just look at him like, okay, you know, obviously you've never been online, but uh, you know, so, you know, you will get some people, you know, who are like, that's a deal breaker. You lied about your age. That's the first thing. Then what else are you going to lie about? Um, my tip for men, because the older the men are, many, 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 they're lying about their age to get it that past the filters, is that if you're gonna lie about your age, you lie one time, I'm not, I don't agree with this, I don't think you should, I'm just right. telling you how to do it. You, <laughs> which sounds kind of opposite, I just know men do it, I know men do it, okay? They're lying about their age to get past the filters. It damned if you do, damned if you don't. 
So you, if you lie, the first time you message, you need to say, or within that first exchange, you know, hey, look, you know, I, I apologize. I was trying to get past the filters and I'm actually, I'm actually, you know, this is my age and I apologize, but I wanted you to know and I'm interested and I, you know, you know, whatever, whatever you want to say, because here's the thing, just like the height is very easy to tell if the person is lying, the age will take longer to find out. So that's what men are banking on. Like, oh, you now you get to know me. But the thing is, is that um, women more so than men, I personally am not really interested in, I don't personally think that people should be stalking people on social media. I, I personally don't uh, recommend this, but many women Will social media stalk you? They want to know something about you. And a lot of women do this for safety. Are you real? You know, are you going to kill me? You know, um, so, you know, and so it, with age, you know, at least uh, in the US, it's so easy to know someone's real age. It is extremely easy. There are literally uh, minimal background checks, which is not a full background check. It's not like for your job where you pay money. You can literally, if you know their real name, you can know someone's age. So easy. So if a woman finds out on her own, that you lied about your age, now it looks bad and you're in defensive. If you tell her on your own up front, it will go better for you. So again, I personally am not a fan of the social media stalking. I personally am not a fan of lying about your age, but what would I have to say, you know, you're saying how many women or men you know, sending dick pics and women sending nudes? Like, yeah, most, a lot, right? So I'm just saying, because I know this is what is happening, that is my tip for the men on the filter and the age. You need to tell the truth at some point. Okay. And the early matter. Tell us about photos. What do you think a guy should do when they put up a photo? Yes, yes. So this is, uh, if I had the money tip, like go to therapy to, you know, figure out how to be in a relationship. My money tip for the online is everything hinges on the photo. So I've taken a couple photos from my guy friends and I had to force them. I'm like, let me take your picture. Come on, come on. Like I had to like coax them and force them because they're embarrassed and they don't want to do it. And, and then my one guy, he's texting, oh my gosh, I have so many dates. They're all due to you. And I felt, you know, very happy because I know what I'm doing. Like I know. So if you're not getting dates, it's your photo. Anybody online can get a date if they want. I mean, it's, a numbers game. So you should 100% get your cousin, get a close coworker, get your female friend. I don't care who you get. If you have to pay someone, you should always make sure to get a good photo taken and none of the selfie with the camera. Cause women are really good about, um, you know, doing these pictures cause they take pictures all the time. Men are terrible at it. So you should pay someone, even if it's your little cousin, to take your photo and you should take, you should take three photos. One photo that is you looking competent or successful, you know, a hobby, uh, insinuating for something for work, an activity, something like that, you know, action shot. You should do one photo that's a little bit more realistic of how you actually look. So you're not, she's not shot. And then, you know, you can do one thirst trap photo. Like you're like, I look good, you know? So, so just as men are looking at the photo and they're really, are they reading your bio? Like maybe, I don't know, you know, <laughs> but uh, you know, a woman with a bad bio with a good picture will still get a message. So there you go. So with the photo, um, no sunglasses. Women want to see your eyes. No fish pictures because women don't care about fish and everybody does fish pictures and it's common. So just don't do it. And then also no group pictures because, you know, it's a very egotistical thing to say, well, uh, well, but that's me. But when women don't know who you are, like, no, they don't know who you are in this photo. And then also it's the ego thing. Like you just think that she should know, like, no, she doesn't. And then also you don't want to be in a photo with someone who's better looking than you. I did have a scenario where a, uh, you know, a guy friend, you know, he had a message from a woman saying, you know, I'm not interested in you. 
but your friend in your picture, is he single? And so you just really don't want to be in that situation or, you know, just a privacy thing. Like maybe your friends don't want to be like, oh God, I'm on mesh.com. <laughs> They're my photo on me. I'm in the bathroom, but I'm there, you know? So <clears throat> that is the number one thing. If you have a good photo, you are almost guaranteed to, you'll find a date. Well, my advice is number one, don't lie. Be as upfront and as truthful as you can, because it makes things a lot easier when you talk to this person. You don't have to try to remember the lies. Yeah. Um, and, and be true to yourself. Uh, like we said before, when you get into that single life, you need to make sure you know who you are. You know, get in touch with yourself again, because when I was married the first time, I totally lost my identity. Mm -hmm. I was doing everything she wanted to do, trying to be the person she wanted me to be, forgot all the things that I liked to do. And I had to learn that all over again. It took me 10 years yeah. because I was still trying to be something, something for somebody else and not for myself. And now I can be myself. And yeah. I think women will appreciate that. If you tell them, this is who I am, you know, I can compromise, but I'm not going to change what I like and who I am. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, you know, if you are jumping in the dating world, whether you're a pro or you're a little lost, you know, get yourself to therapy. If you really want to do well in the dating world, like you say, Kyle, know yourself, fix some of these things, else you're just gonna, you know, do a repeat. Exactly, same yeah. mistakes. And I mean, I can't give any kind of stats on this because I don't know, but I would think that the, the sites that you pay for, like the match.com, mm -hmm. you're probably going to have a better chance of finding somebody who's serious because they're actually paying for the service instead of the free ones. Um, I could be wrong. I mean, there's still creeps out there. You get what you pay for. You get what you pay for. So, you know, I would say that I, you know, people think that Tinder or Grindr, th these are the hookup apps. And I have a girlfriend, she met her husband on Tinder. And I know people who, you know, they got married and they met on match. So, you know, it, it goes back to that point that do not think that it's gonna be easy. Know what you want and say, I'm gonna work for it. I'm gonna put in the work. It's almost like a second job. You know? So you can't just expect that, you know, you just go on there and magically, no, you have to do a little digging. Maybe you actually have to read the bio. You know, maybe you have to vet someone when you text them, all kinds of things so you, you know you're not, you know, with a thirst trap or, you know, a scam artist or something like that. You know, do the work before you show up. Yeah, um, yeah, I would say, you know, this is what I would say. And this is, you know, people are going to have a hard time with this idea. But what I really think would be the most helpful for people is that if you are serious and you're on a dating app, why don't you try this? Every time that you log in, force yourself to ask one person out in person. And I know this is super scary and this is like crazy town because you're just like, well, but the app, at least they're single. Like, no, they're not. There's a lot of time wasters on that app. They have, you know, they're dating someone already and you're number five. You know? So, you know, don't think that if the, um, Online, it's easier to get a lot of rejection. And so men get a little discouraged. When you're young and hot, you got 50 messages in your DMs a day, okay? But then later on, it gets a little bit harder. And so there's a lot of rejection for men online. It, it, you know, women tend to get more messages than men. There are more men on these apps than women. So, you know, it's kind of a blow. It's kind of hard and you just think this is a mess. But if you were to ask one person out in real life, you are much more likely to get a yes. And, you know, say for your age or, or something like that, you're much, it's much easier for someone they got to know you or they saw your face or something like that. So ask people out in real life 
And I know you're like, well, I don't know if they're, you know, in a relationship or this or that. Like, who cares? It doesn't matter. Who cares? It's not your problem. It's not your problem. You're just asking. No big deal. Mm -hmm. Ask as much as you go online. The online is the crutch. Yes. It is the easy way out and you get what you pay for. So if you want easy, then expect to get, you know, a lot of scam artists. Mm -hmm. You want something that is a little bit more immediate, like this woman will see my face, she'll see, you know, I approach her, you know, I'm polite. And you, you know, that same woman, if she was online, she would filter you out. But in person, she might say yes. So it, it's harder, it's scarier. But I would say, if this is what you want, ask in person as much as you do online. That's sound advice. And I would say also be very, very careful um, yeah. when, when you are asking anyone out. Um, I would suggest that you meet up at a, like a restaurant or something like that before you start intertwining these people into your life. You know, don't say I'll, you know, come pick me up at my house. Um, I, I wouldn't even suggest, I mean, unless they just want you to, I wouldn't even suggest doing going to their house and picking them up right away because you never know there's some crazy people yeah. out there it's just not yeah. it's just not as safe i think i feel as it used to be yeah there's you know there's a quote it's well known and it is it this is a you know i'm just paraphrasing but the quote is you know men are afraid that women will laugh at them you know so they're worried about rejection women are afraid that men will kill them so, you know, and this is very true for women, you know, I, I understand rejection is hard, you know, you get your feelings hurt. And, you know, rejection, you know, men are afraid women will laugh at them, they ask them on a date, this is that. And but I will say, you know, very few men, um, a con from a woman, a predatory woman, she ruined your life, she put you in jail to call your mic, you know, this takes a little bit of time, right? So if you vet someone hopefully you escape these predatory women uh, you know with your dignity intact but for women there's very few men if you're a man that you're afraid for your life whereas with women you go to a man's house it's that you know you know you could be physically harmed so of the two i would say hey man go after it get it you know ask women out no big yeah. deal you can do it you can do it I, I, I'd be more afraid for my wallet than I would be my life, but <laughs> you know, you know, men are afraid that women will laugh at them and women are afraid that men will kill them. Well, I'll just say, I'm so glad that I'm married and I don't have to go through the dating anymore, especially in nowadays, but, uh, thank you, Rachel. Um, if anybody has any comments or questions, please, please interact with us in the comment section and uh like share subscribe all those good things and hopefully we'll have just as interesting a conversation on the next show yeah thank you rachel